Ask credit. R slash ask credit by Redify. What folklore creature do you think really exists? Russian Yeti. There was a 3 hour documentary on Discovery, and it freaked me out. It's actually just a typical Yeti. But it squats, and wears a tracksuit. Legend has it, you can't see them with the naked human eye. Only in dash cam videos. I'd love to believe, that one day, when we have mastered the whole space travel thing, we will detect alien life on another planet, which will freak everyone out. Mass panic. Then we go to their planet for a little look and it's just a bunch of Uoks jabbering about being adorable. But Uoks are terrifying. They eat other sentient creatures, and can fight, and win over a technical superior trained soldiers. According to the legend's lore, the Uoks have magic that can completely destroy planets. So don't duck with the Uoks man. That Japanese creature with an eye on his butthole that runs up to you, and moons you while looking at you. Shirim, Japanese, K.O.M.U. Lit. Buttocks eye is a strange yokai with an eye in the place of his anus. Greater than sign. The story goes as follows, long ago. A samurai was walking at night down the road to Kyoto. When he heard someone calling out for him to wait. Who's there? He asked nervously. Only to turn around, and find a man stripping off his clothes, and pointing his bare buttocks at the flabbergasted traveler. A huge glittering eye then opened up where the strange man's anus should have been. Just when I thought Japan couldn't top themselves with bat hit weird yokai, I stand corrected. That is simultaneously the most hilarious and most horrifying thing I have heard of. There's weird hit in the deep woods. I heard the Pope goes out there to do his business. Only place he can escape those Catholic bears. You can't hit when a bear in a mitre is checking you out. Considering the fact that we've recorded massive sea creatures moving faster and deeper than anything we know on sonar, along with the fact that we've explored. What is it? Less than 2% of the ocean? We are also finding new sea creatures every single day. I realize that sounds far-fetched, but this is all at the top of my head. And from what I've heard from a number of sources, whether they were all reliable or not, I honestly cannot recall. I think it's possible there's some big hit down there. Oh. And as someone else mentioned. Hit in the deep woods. Not many people have gone to where I'm talking about. Even those that go miles into the woods stay on well preserved trails. So how do we know there isn't hit miles into nowhere? We don't. I grew up on northern Ontario. And when I was a kid we'd fish lakes you had to fly into. There are thousands of them. No roads. As so many of us live in cities. We tend to lose sight of how ducking remote so much of the world really is. Dumb question. If there was no roads, how was there a landing strip? New York City sewer alligators. In the early 20th century, small alligators as pets were apparently a popular thing among kids, and when they started to get too big, parents allegedly disposed of them by throwing them down the drain slash into the sewers, like dead goldfish. I can totally see them living off the massive sewer rats, and growing to be a decent size. And a dark dank muddy environment like the New York City underground seems like a viable habitat for them. They were also the inspiration for Doc Connors from Spider-Man. New York also has a large subterranean homeless population from which people disappear, but aren't reported as missing all the time. Who will tell more? That toucan that drinks all those pints of Guinness. He's out there irresponsibly flying while intoxicated. Cat calling some seagulls. Hitting in the bushes. Gotta watch out for him. I thought he got eaten by man bear pig. Man bear pig. Absolute menace to society. Someone needs to do something. Warn folks. Canadians. They are just not as nice as the legends say. It's true. Lot of us are tremendous assholes. Source, I'm a tremendous asshole and I live in downtown Toronto. But duck nowhere middle of Saskatchewan reporting in. I'd say at least half our peens here. But. I if they hurt my feelings I can still go get them checked for free at the hospital. Unicorns. Or as the modern world know it as rhinoceros. It's kind of hilarious that the entire reason the concept of a unicorn exists is that the closest thing hitty artists could relate to while trying to draw a rhino was a horse. Early elephant drawings are also horribly inaccurate. Early elephant drawings are also horribly inaccurate. Let's all remember how medieval cats are drawn. 
and we can rest assured that elephants could have five trunks. Tusks up their ass, and ears on their legs for all they knew. Edit, I see many don't know what horrors need to be unleashed. So I'll just make it easy for you or last slash me devalgates, and you can thank me later. The sea bear. The techniques to keep it away are very complicated. That's an oval. It has to be a circle. Move over. I would not be terribly surprised for us to discover a North American ape or monkey living in the deep woods. But I will be shocked if it is more than 2 feet tall and 50 pounds. We humans are unbelievably bad at estimating size and distance. Ask any hunter about ground shrinkage and that is on an animal they love and know passionately and spends years staring at. Someone catching a glance of something odd and remembering it huge is not even a little unusual. The two I think are most likely. The Kraken. Giant squid have been finally been conclusively proven to exist in the last decade or so. It's not beyond belief an even larger variety is out there. Or was still extant in the age of sailing. The other is Bigfoot slash Sasquatch. While the most well known sighting slash recording has been proven a hoax. The stories of them go back hundreds of years in native tribes. The description is not that far off from the Gigantopithecus that once really did exist. While it seems unlikely a sustainable breeding population of those could have remained alive this long. It's not impossible. We've rediscovered other species thought extinct. And the Pacific Northwest is huge and there are a lot of very remote forests. I'm a lot more dubious of this one. But these are the two that seem the most plausible to me. Edit, I've been told multiple times that the Patterson film was not disproven. So I stand corrected on that. For some reason I thought I heard he recanted it as a hoax. But I'm in error. Sir Viberman Lestrade is the one person who keeps my fascination of Bigfoot alive. That man has spent more time alone in the wilderness than most. He spent a year living in a remote cabin in Ontario and has talked about an encounter that he couldn't explain. There are few television personalities that I would trust more than Let Stroud. He's a credible dude. US President Theodore Roosevelt. A highly experienced outdoorsman. Documented in his journal about an encounter he had with what he believed to be one in Wyoming. And shared reports of natives and mountain men who encountered it, and even one who was attacked. Pretty interesting considering if anyone was familiar with western wildlife at the time. It was him. Mokulmbemb, a sauropod that lurks in the massive jungle slash swamp slash rainforest in Central Africa. Spent way too long scrolling to find this. The Congo Basin has so many remote areas, if a large cryptid did exist it would be the best place. I lived in the Congo for a bit, and my father was a bush pilot. You could fly for hours without seeing any sign of life. Planes go missing there all the time. Just crash into the jungle and the jungle swallows them whole. They told us that if you clean, crashes you better hope you die on impact, because any sign of you will be gone by sunrise. My girlfriend that goes to another school. She is real. She can't meet you, because she's the head cheerleader, and is always at practice at weekends. Wendigo and skinwalkers. Edit, guys. This comment got so many answers I can no longer read the new ones that are showing up because they like disappear from existence after I tap on them in my messages. I'm from East Africa and we also have mythology about skinwalkers. The most famous story is about two lions called the ghost in the darkness. They were two adult male lions without manes. They killed many workers of a British colonial railway and took their bodies as trophies and stored the cadavers in their cave. This is very very strange behavior for a lion or any other animal. Africans believe that the ghost in the darkness were two witch doctors that turned into lions to fight the colonialists that were destroying the animal's habitat. Both lions were eventually killed. They are now in a museum in America I think. They're in Chicago. Thunderbirds. Isn't that malt liquor? No. It's an old puppet TV show. Danny DeVito. I spotted him running naked through the woods of Mond once. No one ever believes me. But I swear he really exists. 400s. If not one. Zero zero zeros of years. Fairies have been throughout stories. Literature. And tells. Little bright lights. Surly people were seeing something. Maybe it was assumed the orbs had tiny human form. IDK. Could go hand in hand I suppose. Fireflies maybe? 
you would not believe your eyes. As a form of a traditional demon, the Baba Yaga, a witch Slavic folklore, had an imaginary friend named Baba Witch that lived in my barn when I was little. One time I was playing with it and got locked in a room with no lock. I screamed for nearly 30 minutes before my mom got me out. Fast forward a few years, and I had gotten these things called creature cards which were like big cards with pictures and facts about animals and monsters and stuff. When I saw the Baba Yaga, it looked almost exactly how I'd imagined Baba Witch. Fast forward to now, it all kind of clicked for me. In Japanese, Obazan is the word for grandmother and old ladies in general are called Babas sometimes cause IDK. Old, not really related, but thought it was funny. The Windigo. Windigo? About a half hour ago. Mate. Get off the internet. Dad. The Orang Pendek. It's a small bipedal ape supposedly inhabiting the rainforests of Sumatra. A group of scientists even claim they have distinctive footprints and hair samples, but it's not really confirmed if it exists. Edit. Fixed name. El Chupacabra. It could very possibly be wheel it really is not that crazy of a creature. I'm as for cryptozoology as the next guy. But I actually heard about a possible explanation for the chupacabra. It's a coyote or some type of canine with scabies, mange. So they lose all their hair and start acting odd. There also have been people who released inbred dogs for hunting purposes, see Texas Blue Dog, that were also called chupacabras. So those are possible answers for the chupacabra. Though, it doesn't fit the bipedal version's cue dramatic music and lens flare. Edit, a word. I mean, there are two-legged dogs that can get around. 